Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. In today's video let's talk a little bit about CPDLC, what it is and how we use it in regular line operations. CPDLC or Controller Pilot Data Link um, Connection is a system that's been established as part of the future air navigation systems or in short fans. The CPDLC system substitutes the radio messages that uh, pilots are sending to controllers and serves number one as a very easy note to make things clearer and more understandable as in there is less risk of confusion because somebody misheard something and it enables controllers to send more messages at the same time and therefore handle more aircraft. I am going to uh, show you how CPDLC works here in the Phoenix Airbus A320 and the same would of course apply to any other airliner that has CPDLC implemented as well. First and foremost it is important that CPDLC does not completely replace voice communication so it is necessary that you establish voice contact with the controller first before you can use CPDLC and you have to monitor the frequency continuously for um, anything that the controller might want to tell you over voice. Let us now check in with Gena Radar and then we're going to lock on his CPDLC as well. Green Radar, hello, Ocean 2 for Alpha, flight level 300 in Mount Berta. Ocean 2 for Alpha, Sailors at any side. Now that we have checked in verbally with the controller, we can click on ATC COM in the FMC, connection, notification, and then we're going to lock on his CBDLC code. Most WhatsApp and IVAO controllers do have their lock on code in the controller remarks. Now click on notify. Now it's notifying the ATC center. We can see up here already next ATC, Vienna. Now he has been notified. Now if we just wait for a little bit, the controller has to accept our lock on. That happens either automatically or manually depending on the um, different controller. And any moment we should now get a lock on notification sent. This can sometimes take a little bit as a German, I always like to say CPDLC is a little bit like German internet. It either works or it doesn't. In any case, it can be slow. And that is the reason why CPDLC always just acts as an addition to voice communication, but never as a total replacement. Any message that is not time critical can be sent via CPDLC while anything that is time critical will have to be sent via voice communication. And you can see that right now we have logged on to our traffic control a minute ago and we're still waiting for the confirmation of the log. Now here it comes. You can see the blue message flashing here, and if we don't click that away, we're going to get an oral sound about it as well. Descent, uh, 10, feet. Can I change book one, zero, two, one. Like now, we can cancel that by uh, clicking the ATC message button. Over here, the app has now tells us, lock on is accepted. I close that, then we have another message, current unit, Veeam radar. And another message, report requested level. Now, in the 737 at least, we would now get answer prompts down here, over which we could uh, answer to this request from ATC. In the A320, we don't get that, so I am just going to go on request, flight level and altitude, and today we want to climb to flight level 370. So. I'm now ascending, flight level 370 as flight level or altitude, and you could add due to aircraft performance or due to weather, but it is not necessary. Click transfer to DCDU, request flight level 370, send. Now it tells us sending and received by air traffic control. And now air traffic control has received our request to climb to flight level 370 just as if we would have requested the same via voice. 
It's now going to take a short while until the controller has read the message and sends the response. And in a certain period of time, we are going to get our response to our CPDLC message. When we are receiving this response, it is important that we, first of all, answer via CPDLC, wait until the instruction is received by ATC, that serves as the readback, and only once the instruction is received by our traffic control, we can then start and execute it. You can see Maybe once again... Oh, here we go. So, reply to our request, uh, climb to flight level 370. I'm clicking Wilco. Uh, now, it tells us Wilco in blue up here. Now I click on send. Now it says sending. And now it says received by ATC. Now that this is received, we can start our climb to flight level 370. Set. We have flight level 370. And looks like he sent us another message. I've just cancelled that oral warning here. So let's close this one. And if we are unsure if we have received another message, we can always click on the recall. But we can see that nothing further came in. We have different options available on what we can do with our CPDLC. We have the message record over here, over which we can um, review all the previous messages. Then we have certain reports, like a manual position report up here. Oh, and another message here. Thanks for using CPDLC. Best regards, VACC Austria. And let's see. And contact, contact Adria Radar 130.45. So we have different prompts here for our available answers. Which is either unable, standby, or will go. So, for this one, we shall contact Adria Radar. So, I reply Wilco. Now it puts Wilco active up here. And send. Sending. And received. Now we can contact the new station on 130.45. Hardware Radar Hello, Ocean 2 for Alpha, climbing flight level 370 in North Berta. Ocean 2 for Alpha, Hardware Radar Double Run, identified from this plan, flight level 370, direct to Rana. Climb flight level 370, direct to Rana, Ocean 2 for Alpha. Do you have CPDLC? Uh, stand by, please. Okay, so. Vienna has just locked us off. We got that message here from Vienna, lock off. In the meantime, air traffic control cleared us direct to Rana, which is down here. And whenever you are checking in with it, thank you. And as you just heard, if you are unsure if an air traffic controller features CPDLC, you can always ask him if he actually has it. Now. We've just been logged off, so we can do the log on again via ATC com, connection, notification, and now we just have to check the uh, log on code of the controller. Of course, we could at any time ask him, or once again, we just look into the controller remarks, and in this case, we can see the log on is Alpha Delta Romeo Whiskey, so we go Alpha Delta Romeo Whiskey, center, notify. And now it's doing the very same thing again that we had previously with Jenna Radar, in that it's notifying. Now the controller gets the notification on his side, and now he can accept us, and then we're going to get the message back that we have been accepted on CPDLC. There is an approved phraseology when you're checking in with the new controller that you can add the term CPDLC behind your call sign, 
However, that is not mandatory and in fact it is not really going to do any good. One example when we use this is when my airline switched to using CPDLC in early 2020. Prior to that we have not used the system. So air traffic controllers weren't used to hearing our call sign and seeing us use CPDLC. So when we just started with it, we normally added it behind the call sign. But that is absolutely not necessary and nowadays we don't even do it anymore because everybody is using it anyway. So lock-on is accepted, close, current unit, RDR radar and close. And that is basically the whole magic beyond CPDLC. So let's quickly recap for those of you who have just joined. CPDLC does not replace voice communication with air traffic controllers, but it only adds on to it. It makes it easier for an air traffic controller to send out messages that might be prone to confusion, for example frequencies, if somebody does not understand that well, and it simply makes it possible to send messages to the air truck while the controller is still busy on voice doing something else. Even when using CPDLC, you constantly have to monitor the voice frequency, so CPDLC does not replace your radio communication even after a communication has been established. It is normally being used for non-time critical instructions such as climbs, descents or directs or frequency handoffs. However, anything that is time critical will always be done over voice. CPDLC is a two-way system, so as you can see we can receive messages from air traffic control, but as you saw earlier on it is possible for us to request something from air traffic control as well, as we can see over here. That shall conclude our basic summary of the CPDLC system. I will close this with one final word, and that is that while at the moment not every aircraft add-on has CPDLC integrated, there is a third-party client available called Easy CPDLC that runs completely independent of your flight simulator, and that can therefore be used with every aircraft. If you are unsure if an air traffic controller uses CPDLC, simply ask him, like I just did. And in many cases, VATS and controllers might just have forgotten to log on to CPDLC initially and will thereafter log on when you actually ask them. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed this one. And if you did, let me know in the comments below what your experience with CPDLC is. And yes, guy, I know. I wish for PMDG to include it in the 737 as well, but if that is going to happen, I don't know, forward your request to them, put it in their forums or via the ticket system if you want them to implement it, and I'm sure that if enough people are going to ask for it, then eventually it is going to come. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and if you do want to support the channel, you can do so through the Buy Me A Coffee link that you can find in the video description below. And if you want to become a permanent supporter, you can use the Patreon link that is just below Buy Me A Coffee. For now, however, thank you very much for your attention, and I'm looking forward to see you all again, hopefully very soon.